Apgar score and full term newborn. Outline Introduction Apgar scoring system Limitations of Apgar score One minute Apgar score The full term newborn Introduction First put forward by Professor Virginia Apgar, a renowned New York-based anesthesiologist, in 1953, Apgar score is a quantitative assessment of neonates' condition at birth, especially with reference to the respiratory, circulatory and neurologic status. It is of no use for taking a decision regarding the steps of resuscitation since the latter would be needed within a minute, that is, before the scoring is APGAR scoring system Clinical features Score 0 Score 1 Score 2 Appearance, color Blue or pale Body pink, limbs blue Pink all over. Pulse. Heart rate. Nil. Less than 100 per minute. Over 100 per minute. Grimace. Response to catheter put into nostril or stimulation of sole or foot. Nil. Grimace or feeble cry. Cry or sneezing. Activity and tone. Limp. Some flexion of limbs. Active movements. Respiration. Nil. Slow, irregular. Good, strong cry. Limitations of the APGAR score. APGAR score is of no particular utility in deciding steps of resuscitation in the labor room. Gestation age has significant bearing on muscle tone and reflex response. Acrocyanosis, a normal finding in the newborn, is assigned score 1. The score may give erroneous information. For instance, low score may well be secondary to causes other than birth asphyxia, namely immature CNS, nasopharyngeal suction, maternal medication, maternal anesthesia, or neonatal sepsis. 5. It provides no clue even for future neurologic outcome. One minute APGAR score. Interpretation of one minute APGAR score. APGAR score. Interpretation. Action needed. 7 to 10. Excellent condition with no birth asphyxia. Needs no particular observation. 4 to 6. Moderate birth asphyxia. May be shifted to mother, but needs to be carefully observed. 0 to 3. Severe birth asphyxia. Needs care in NIC. The full term newborn. Physical characteristics. The normal full term newborn weighs around 3.4 kilograms. Range 2.5 to 4.6 kilograms and the length averages around 50 centimeters range 45 to 55 centimeters the head circumference is about 35 centimeters range 32.6 to 37.2 centimeters the chest circumference is approximately 3 centimeters less than the head circumference at birth. The chest is rounded rather than flattened anterior posteriorly. The abdomen is prominent. 
the upper segment is to lower segment ratio is 1.7 is to 1. In other words, the trunk is relatively larger and the extremities short. The midpoint of the length, stature, therefore lies at the umbilicus instead of the symphysis pubis as in grown-up children and adults. The newborn's posture is a prototype of the partial flexion attitude in utero. The external auditory canal is relatively short and straight and the eardrum thick. The eustachian tube is short and broad. The mucoid material in the middle ear may simulate an exudate of infection. The maxillary and ethmoid sinuses are small. The frontal and sphenoidal sinuses are poorly developed. The kidneys are often palpable. So are the liver and spleen, just below the costal margins. The traumatic effects of labor may be encountered in the form of edema of the vertex and overriding of the cranial bones. The pinkish or mottled skin on the dorsal aspects of extremities and upper back is covered with lanugo hair. The scleri tend to be somewhat bluish. The ear cartilage is fully curved and firm, showing quite good elastic recoil. The breast nodule is palpable, measuring over 5 mm in diameter. The scrotum shows adequate rugi and deep pigmentation. At least one testis is fully palpable in the scrotum. The labia majora covers the labia minora. The sole of foot shows prominent deep creases in anterior two-third or more area. Noteworthy peculiarities of the full-term neonate. Anthropometry Weight 3 kg, 2.5 to 4.6 kg. Length 50 cm, 45 to 55 cm. Head circumference 35 centimeters. Chest circumference 32 centimeters. Upper segment by lower segment ratio 1.7 is to 1. Crown rump by rump heel ratio. Midpoint of length lies at umbilicus rather than at pubic symphysis. Vitals. Respiratory rate. 40 per minute, 35 to 50 per minute. Heart rate, 140 per minute, 120 to 160 per minute. Hematologic status. Hemoglobin, 18 grams per deciliter. Miscellaneous. Posture is of partial flexion. Palpability of liver and spleen is usual. Palpability of kidneys may be present in some. Sinuses are small and underdeveloped. Only solitary mastoid cell in antrum. Eustachian tube is short and broad. Eardrum placed more obliquely. External auditory canal short and straight. Physiologic characteristics. The established respiratory rate varies between 35 and 50 per minute. Crying tends to enhance the rate up to 60 per minute. Peripheral cyanosis may be encountered for a short while after birth. The heart rate varies between 120 and 160 per minute. Besides high cardiothoracic ratio as compared to an adult, Transient benign murmurs are often heard. The cry is, as a rule, vigorous, rooting, turning the head towards and to root out a stimulus placed close to the mouth. Suckling, gagging and swallowing reflexes are well developed. The newborn is therefore capable of accepting breastfeeding within a few hours following delivery when the recovery from exhaustion of birth is over. 
the initial demand for feed at irregular intervals gives way by the end of the first week to a fairly regularized pattern of demand at two to five hours. The first tools, meconium, are passed within 24 hours and are black covered, thick and viscid. On third to fourth day, these are replaced by greenish brown stools with milk curds, the so called transitional stools. After another gap of three to four days, typical milk stools follow. The first urine is passed during or shortly after birth. A proportion of the newborns may take 24 hours or even longer to pass urine. Failure to pass urine by 48 hours is a matter of concern. The output and GFR show rapid increase in the first two weeks. Abundance of urates gives the diaper a pink stain. The body temperature quickly falls after birth, but is reverted within four to eight hours. The energy requirements initially are 55 kilocalories per kilogram per day, but rise to 110 kilocalories per kilogram per day by the end of the first week. On an average, the term newborn loses about 6% of body weight during the first week. The weight loss may be up to 10%, up to 15% in preterms. If the loss is in excess of 10%, dehydration fever on the third to fourth day may develop. The initial weight loss is made up by the tenth day. The hemoglobin is high, around 18 grams per deciliter, with slight reticulocytosis, normoblastemia, and leukocytosis, up to 35,000 per cmm, on first couple of days after birth. Notably, stressful situations, say fulminant infections, may cause only negligible leukocytosis and even leukopenia. Establishment of normal hemostatic mechanism depends on acquisition of normal intestinal flora and elaboration of vitamin K rather than on minimal passage of clotting factors from the mother. Blood sugar is relatively low in the newborn and a fall below 20 mg per deciliter may cause seizures. Likewise, blood calcium is low and a falls below 7.5 mg per deciliter may lead to seizures. Though IgG level of the newborn is quite high, his IgM, IgA and IgE levels are negligible. IgM near absence in the newborn predisposes him to gram-negative bacillary infections. T lymphocyte functions too are reduced in the neonate. Fat is not as efficiently digested by the newborn as protein and carbohydrates. At cellular level, the red cells are more vulnerable to hemolysis. There is greater risk of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and enhanced risk from drug therapy because of reduced capacity to metabolize certain drugs. Neurodevelopment the following six levels of behavioral state or the level of arousal, wakefulness are recognized. Level 1. Deep sleep. Level 2. Sleep with rapid eye movements, REM. Level 3. Drowsy state, quiet wakefulness. Level 4. Quiet, active, alert state. Good interaction with environments. Level 5. Awake and active state. Level 6. State of active, intense crying. Psychosocial development. Experiences during pregnancy, labor, and first hours after delivery have the effect of bonding the parents to some degree to the infant. This realization has led to revision in traditional practices, leading to involvement of parents in prenatal programs, encouragement of family-centered activities for pregnancy 
at childbirth, boosting of breastfeeding, and rooming in arrangements in the neonatal period. Some minor problems of the newborn that may cause parental anxiety. Vomiting. Transitional stools. Constipation. Toxic erythema. Erythema toxicum. Mylia. Mongolian spots. Salmon patches. Macaula hemangioma. Nevis simplex. Stalk bites. Benign neonatal hemangiomatosis, BNH. Harlequin color change. Epstein pearls. Sucking callosities. Subconjunctival hemorrhage. Physiologic mastitis. Vaginal bleeding. Natal teeth. Hiccup, hiccough. Nasolacrimal duct blockage, umbilical hernia, hydrocele, physiologic phimosis, hymenal tags.